Hey yo everyone, KCR Jones here and welcome to a new video that I've put off for a little bit now. Today in this one we're going to talk about my O-Scale Cabooses. And by that I pretty much mean the Cabooses, or Cabis, that I run regularly. Now this doesn't mean it's every single last one of mine. I do have some ones when I was a kid. I do have some in storage. But these are the ones that I keep out and run, and you definitely have seen most of them in my videos if you're watching uh, the channel frequently. To start off, this is an Atlas O New Haven NE6, and I got this for my birthday from my grandma. I have to say, honestly, this is one of the best cabooses that I've ever seen in a model form. It just looks phenomenal looking at it. The paint is really nice. If you look closely, there's just so much little details. But I will say on this side, she arrived a little broken. If you look, it's missing one of the um, poles. That's the term. And also, the uh, ladders are also a little bent. I kid you not, this is under power. The lighting in this isn't the greatest. I have to say, the two weaknesses on this... The lighting and the weight it's a pretty heavy caboose but at that I will say that when the lights are on and you look inside there's great details even on the interior and stuff you barely see unless it's in your hand like look at the the floorboards and that um that bench like it's all just nicely detailed and of course speaking of detail on the roof you can see those little piping details and just so many rivets it just by the looks, this is one of the best. I can't argue that. It's Atlas O Master Series. Um, but on that note, here's the underframe, pretty much the bottom and everything, and the running gear. You can see it's still pretty clean, too. The guy who had this pretty much just never ran it, I guess. It was pretty clean. Let's move on to the next one. This one you have seen more recently because I just got my first Chessy Jeep. This is my Lionel Wi-Fi Cupola Cam CNO Extended Vision Caboose. I believe that's the name, or Wide Vision. Uh, and like I said, the Wi Fi cam, you can see it there in the cupola, just right there. Um, this is a car I've had for a couple years. Uh, it's very good. I have to say, it's the right kind of weight. Like I said, it's roughly about 10 ounces. That's pretty much what you'd want to have your caboose to be, just over half a pound, if that makes sense. Uh, under the lighting, I have to say, it's pretty darn good. Especially with how, you know, the Atlas one doesn't look that great in comparison. Like, look at this. You can actually see the lights on it. Uh, it does have the little marker on the end, which I really like, the little markers. The underneath isn't that greatly detailed, but then again, it's an underframe. You're not going to really notice too much under there. I will say the overall detailing on it is pretty good as well. It's nothing to scream about. And on the controversy, here is pretty much her sister. Uh, this was the CSX one that I picked up in Trainland a couple years ago. Or on the channel, I should say. I put some decals on her and made her a custom Nickel Floyd Railway Pepsi caboose. Since my railroad does ship Pepsi. Uh, this is the caboose that we run exclusively on the end of the uh, Kohler Express. Haha, <laughs> funny nickname. I was pretty proud of that yellow though on the end. I, I like how it came out. But overall, it's the same caboose, you know, the same lighting package. It's got the Wi-Fi camera in there. It's got the little marker. It's, like I said, it's the same tooling. It's pretty much your sister. You can see on the bottom, it's the same thing. I'm glad that I got both of these, though, and let's move on to the next. This one hasn't been seen on the channel for a while. This is my Lionel Lines N5B caboose. Now, this one's completely fictional. It was made sort of for fun and also as a send-off caboose to something that I actually appreciate a lot. To my knowledge, this was the last smoking caboose ever produced in O-Scale, which is a little bit of a bummer because I really like the smoking caboose element. And I was not careful with this caboose as much as I should have when I was younger or when as soon as it came out. Uh, over time, I accidentally broke the uh, the pipe and this lantern also is broken. I do have to open it up one day and try to get it because I also pulled the wire on it. Not kidding, this is under the light and this is sort of a problem with smoking cabooses. The windows tend to fog up a little bit and on camera you barely can tell that the lights are on it or not. I will say if you look at it from the back though you can tell because the lanterns are on. And especially the underneath when you look at the, um, 
the two switches there and the all the detailing this is honestly a nice caboose it's made out of metal though that's the thing because people were complaining the uh, plastic caboose is melted, they decided to make it out of metal, so it is a little on the heavy side. I will say, though, that it never melted anything because it's made out of die cast. Um, looking at the smoke unit, though, that's not the original stack. Like I said, I broke it off. That's actually a eye and ear piece from my doctor's. <laughs> I just put it in there, and stupidly, it works. I don't know how, but it works. In the same production run, this caboose, I'm sure many of you recognize... This is my New Haven NE3 caboose, which is almost using the exact same Pensy tooling. Lionel went the extra mile, uh, went the extra mile there, and they put on extra car f or body frames. They put separate ladders on it. The only thing I'd say that is wrong, quote unquote, are the trucks. The NE3 type actually rode on passenger trucks. Plus, they weren't built for the Pennsylvania Railroad. You know, this is a Pensy tooling. These flags, though, I made myself. I'm happy to say that those are literally just red paper towels I dyed red on toothpicks. The lighting in her, as you can see, it's the same kind of lighting package. It's not that great to begin with. It's LED strips. They do look okay in person, but on camera, they're just not easy to photograph. But on the bottom, as you can see, it's the same tooling. You can even see the, uh, the hole for the smoke switch, which this thing doesn't have a smoke unit. But yeah, like I said, this is pretty much one that I'm famous for. A lot of you know Charlie, as I nicknamed her. Let's move on to another Lionel Caboose. Oh boy, where to begin with this one? This is a Lionel Northeastern type caboose, which I custom decaled, obviously, to New Haven C576, which is an NE5 type caboose on the New Haven. Now... This one is a little different. You can obviously tell my paper graphic due to my printer not wanting to print red properly. Um, I wanted this one though because it smokes and it has the right amount of windows. A lot of times the Northeast Cabooses have four windows per sides, but the New Haven's NE5 type only had two. And this one, like I said, how it smokes, I melted part of the window away over time, like I said. The, um, the heated smoke unit just melts away the body. Under the lighting, you can see that the windows are fogged, but you can definitely see the lighting better in this one, especially from the ends where the doors are. You can really tell the lighting through there. What I will say, though, is when it's up and running, this one actually does have a pretty good smoke unit. It didn't want to perform for the video for some reason. Then again, my transformer for the demo track isn't that great, um, but it smokes. It smokes pretty well. I have to say that's one of its stronger suits is besides the paper decal that doesn't look too great, the lighting's pretty good, and of course it smokes so good that it caked up the underside. Let's move on to the next one. <sighs> Not accurate. Doesn't mean I hate it, but this is a MTH Premier New Haven, supposedly, off-center cupola caboose. Now through some research, I'm pretty sure this is a Santa Fe CA1 type caboose tooling. Um, this was in a freight set from MCH from a very long time ago, where honestly, it's a reminder to anyone who doesn't know O-Scale. This hobby, there's not a lot of toolings out there compared to like HO and whatnot, because these trains are a lot bigger than those trains. And because of which they cost a little more money and the companies that make them don't have every type of tooling available on hand they're going to use what they can sometimes to sell a paint scheme and whatnot and not a body sometimes vice versa okay can we get over that good besides all that this honestly is a really good caboose i have to say the lighting this is one of my favorite cabooses when it comes to lighting it's actually really nice and bright. It's incandescent bulbs, which you do have to replace a little bit more often than LED bulbs, but it looks fantastic. I have to say that the rivet details aren't too bad. You can see the crew figures that I put in there, by the way. Um, but honestly, like I say, this is honestly a really good caboose. It's got the right weight. It's, you know, like I said, the lighting, the paint works pretty good. Overall, I like it. What's to say that, you know, it's bad just because it's not the right type of tooling? Continuing on with this trend, 
Here is another caboose that I'm sure many of you recognize and know that I'm a little famous for once again. This is my New York and Atlantic Railway Center Cupola Caboose. Now this is an MTH Rail King Caboose. Honestly, I have to say that you could put a premier label on this thing and fool me. Holy crap, this has some of the best details for something Rail King. And for those who don't know, MTH Premier is the high-end stuff that has the best details, blah, blah, blah. Rail King is more entry-level stuff for uh, O27 guys or people starting out. Now, I bought this for the paint scheme, like I said, and it is not accurate. New York Atlantic doesn't have center cupola cabooses. Does that bother me? Absolutely not. And to back that theory up, this is actually one of the most used cabooses on my railroad. And it's not even Red or New Haven. I know, crazy, but I honestly just love this thing. The lighting in it is pretty much as good as the uh, other MTH cabooses I have. And that's a strong side of MTH, I have to say. Is anything with lights and whatnot, Mike knows how to do that stuff. You will also see the crew figures in there that I once again put in there. I will say that for those who ask, you know, why do I put crew figures in extra cabooses? Well, I take crew figures out of my locomotives and I put better ones in there. So what do I do with these extra crew figures? Throw them in a caboose. <laughs> they're paid, hey, they're crew figures, and they do technically ride in a caboose. The underframe's nothing to scream about. Then again, you know, it's an underframe. Um, but honestly, like I say, this New York Atlantic one... It's honestly one of my favorites. Now this one, I just got. I also got this for my birthday, but it showed up late. A friend of mine ordered it just after my birthday and decided to give it as a belated present. This is also an MTH Rail King Center Cupola Caboose. It's a little older than my New York Atlantic one, and I'm hoping that I appreciate this one as much as the New York Atlantic one. Just because it's pretty much the same tooling. I will say the trucks are different. These ones are sprung. Um, the lighting in it is pretty good, you'll see that in a minute, but honestly, this is the first caboose that I have that has the white outlines. For those who have seen the G-Gage videos, a friend of mine has, I think it's USA Trains, it's the same kind of caboose as this, where it has the white lining and the McGinnis paint and everything. And honestly, it, it looks nice. It, it genuinely just looks nice. With the lighting, like I said, you can see it's pretty bright. MTH knows how to do bright lights in a caboose, especially for cameras. Then again, you know they're incandescent. It has the markers. You will only notice the one crew figure in there since I didn't open this thing up yet. I don't even think I put my, uh, my sticker on the underneath either. But this one, I haven't run yet. It's literally just been thrown for this video out of the box. But I hope that I appreciate it as much as I should. This is the oddball. What you see here is a K-Line Extended Vision Caboose. And it's different. You can definitely tell by the wheels and the trucks and the silver paint. Fight me on this one. I think the silver paint's one of the greater parts of this caboose. Um, definitely makes it stick out and nothing like an actual New Haven caboose. Like I said earlier, does that make this a bad one? Absolutely not. I will say that it does have the smoke unit, and it melted the roof. Yeah, this is what people are complaining about smoking cabooses. Like, this is the damage they can do. Which, honestly, it's my damn fault for running it five hours at a time continuously without shutting it off. I will say, though, that I think my favorite aspect of this caboose has to be those lamps. They just look so right on the end of the car. Or the, uh, yeah, the end of the car. The lighting inside is terrific, I have to say. Those incandescent bulbs, they're very good. The smoking, you can even see there in this still shot, it's, I think it's my best smoking caboose is this one. And like I said, with those lamps, like, just look at them from here. It, it just looks so right. Ignore the, you know, this is supposed to be a New Haven caboose and all that. Just those lamps, they look right. Anyway, the underneath, this is a fun piece. Uh, to look at it underneath, it's very different to all my other stuff because I don't have too much K-Line. Underrated company, by the way, K-Line. But if you look at these uh, switches, you can see that it has TMCC and DCS. I'm kidding. That's actually a switch to tell the caboose which voltage to run under to not burn out the smoke unit. 
not so much to burn the roof, but to burn the unit out. On a conventional layout, you're going to uh, change speeds all the time. On TMCC or DCS, you got to run that stuff on four or 18 continuous volts. And that pretty much just tells the smoke unit how heavy to burn. And speaking of how heavy to burn, if you're looking at the video, I didn't push it for the video, but honestly, this thing just performs really good. Now, with all of that in mind, I don't want to say that one caboose is better than the other, or I hate this one because this one is nicer, or anything like that. I'm doing this video for fun. I wanted to show you all what different types of cabooses I have, because sometimes in collecting, you don't want to collect one central focus. You want to get what you like. And honestly, I like these cabooses for different reasons. And I will say that, yeah, there's no real standardization. I will say that I'm trying to move towards a more centralized New Haven Railroad prototype. But the reality is in this hobby, that's not going to happen. I have to deal with the best of what I can. Plus, I have other stuff that isn't exactly New Haven. And some of this stuff I have that just represents, you know, fun. But my question is to you in the video my uh, fellow subscribers and to those who are new watching this which caboose was your favorite and why I want to hear you and if anything if you want to make a video like this yourself by all means I'm not gonna stop you but if you enjoyed this video uh, please give it a like if you haven't already subscribed to the channel that will help us out both a lot um, by all means, besides commenting which caboose you liked, or if you have one that you like, you know, for reasons on your own railroad, if you want to just chat in the comments, I'm always open to that. But otherwise, this is Casey signing off. Hope you all take care. Stay safe. Casey out.